How you gonna keep them down on the farm after they've seen Paris was the title of a popular song back around the time of World War I. Today you might ask, how you gonna keep them down on the farm without a computer? Yes, computers have found their way to farming. And they could be an answer for some two million American family farmers looking for something, anything, to keep them from going out of business. Time was when a farmer could make himself a $30,000 profit on a gross of $100,000. Well, today he's lucky if he can net 1,000 on that kind of gross. When Harry Reasoner learned that that was happening to farmers in eastern Colorado, and that they were now putting computers to work on their farms, he went to see for himself. Harold Bach's family has been farming 4,000 acres in eastern Colorado for 100 years, four generations. Like most family farmers, he's much better at growing crops and raising cattle than he is at keeping track of money. And like most family farmers today, he's in trouble. We're not going to be able to stay on the farm very much longer, you know, if we don't get some better prices for our commodities. Or make some changes in and what you do. That's right. Harold Bach is making changes, and he has some hope, because he has a friend at Farmer's State Bank in Yuma, Colorado. At Farmer's State, they're teaching old farmers and old bankers new tricks. When we look at your asset to revenue ratio, it's 9.54. That means it takes $9.54 of assets for you to generate $1 of sales. And that's high. Your survival level on that asset to revenue ratio is $2.61. So what we need to do, we need to take a look at our different uh, enterprises and see which is uh, cash flowing. Asset to revenue ratio, cash flow, what kind of talk is that for decent American farmers? Barry Hobson, Vice President of Farmers State Bank, says it's the kind of talk they have to get used to if they want to keep on farming. The hard part of the job is to convince farmers that it is up to them to take control of their financial situation and to be active managers, to go out and do whatever they have to do to get their financial structure on a sound basis. What's the big deal? Why shouldn't farmers know how to handle their money? Traditionally, farmers have taken care of the crops and let the money take care of itself. That's because they have always used the value of their land as collateral for their loans. In the 70s, that was fine. Crop prices were high and land values kept going up. Farmers started expanding. They bought more land and the equipment to work it. Around Yuma, expansion was expensive. The great, big, beautiful blue skies of eastern Colorado don't have any smog in them. The trouble is they don't have much rain either, about 14 inches a year around here. And the soil is dry and gray, not the rich black of the upper Midwest. So farmers adjust. Sometimes they let fields lie unmolested for a season, building up deep moisture, and then plant winter wheat. That kind of dry farming sort of works. Or they irrigate. That works very well, but it's expensive. The water has to be brought up from deep wells and moved to the fields by electric power. And that can cost up to $300 an acre or more for corn. That was all right when crop prices were high, but in the early 80s, the bubble burst. Crop prices and farm land values collapsed. And farmers found themselves saddled with debts they couldn't pay off. The only way farmer's state could collect its money was by foreclosing on farms. Don Starnes, president of Farmer's State, found it harder and harder to foreclose on friends. Very close friends, uh, people I've known all my life. Uh, people back uh, from when I was in uh, high school in Ray, Colorado, and played against them in athletics, uh, have had to say, no, we can't go any further, or we've had to uh, say we're going to have to uh, take whatever means might be necessary to collect that loan. Uh, because that uh, money is not our money, it's our depositors' money, and we have to safeguard that to the best of our ability. The banks couldn't make collateral loans anymore because most farmers had run out of collateral. So, like a growing number of bankers in farm states, Starnes began treating farms like any other business by putting them on a cash flow basis. He hired Barry Hobson and plugged in the computer. Hobson has a master's degree in agricultural economics from Colorado State University. When a farmer wants a loan from Farmer's State Bank, he first sits down with Hobson. 
They put every financial detail of the farm into the computer. Then Hobson tells the farmer how he's doing and how he can do better. About 32% of your revenue this year is coming from crops, uh, about 19% from cattle, so that shows a well-diversified operation. What's kind of interesting is that the government payments are making up 30%, almost a full third of what we're projecting in revenue. But look at the operating debt here, here at uh, Farmer State Bank. It's gone up year after year. Mm -hmm. The computer is not only used to get the farmer through the year in shape to pay back his loan. It's also used to find a long-term solution to the farmer's problems. We've got to uh, get a hold of this problem and see if we can correct it. We've got a simulation model uh, built for the computer that will simulate your financial structure out for the next five years. And we have to make very few assumptions to do that. Uh, we don't have to assume any yield or price level. We can, we can use a whole variety of yields and prices. The next step for the farmer is a meeting with Don Starnes. Hobson sits in. Based on what the computer tells him, Starnes decides whether the farmer gets his loan. I think we're going to have to have a little more to operate on this year. Barry, when you've reviewed this, uh, percentages, uh, what do they look like insofar as uh, debt to assets? Harold's debt asset ratio is very much in line. Debt load is, is satisfactory at this point. Have you uh, explored or looked any of maybe uh, selling some assets that are not necessary for him to continue with his operation and not materially change that operation? We can do that. Uh, we feel there are assets there that probably could be sold without affecting revenues, but uh, as Harold pointed out. Uh, I think this is a poor time to sell assets if you're lucky to get a buyer for them. I agree, Harold, and I think that that's very true. Harold Bach got the loan he wanted. Some other farmers don't find it so easy. They may be uh, putting on too much fertilizer. They may be shooting for 200 bushel corn when probably they should drop back, fertilize for 150 bushel corn, cut some expenses. Or they may be able to sell a tract of land uh, to cut their overall debt and then be able to service that. We like to try every way possible to restructure that operation so that we don't ask, have to ask the man to sell out or are forced to sell him out. Stern says some farmers resent it when the bank tells them what to do. We have specifically uh, told them what we felt they needed to do. Uh, reluctantly, they have done it. And they are, they're not making a lot of money, but they're staying even with the board and uh, I think they'll be able to weather the storm. Barry Hodson told us about one farmer who was getting farther and farther into debt and wanted to do something about it. They did a computer simulation. He said he could cut expenses by $10,000 a year. So we did that on the computer. He wanted to acquire more land by, by renting so that he would expand his scale. And when we looked at those solutions, which seemed fairly aggressive, none of them worked. Finally, we looked at selling a couple parcels of land, even at a price that was far below his cost, and we discovered that after five years, he was uh, much better off, no matter what price he sold that land for. Hard for him to swallow. Hard for him to swallow, but when he understood fully the implications, he, he was willing. <laughs> Yuma is not the kind of town where you would expect a computer to be running things. It's a small, old-fashioned town, the kind that just about shuts down when the county fair opens. It's the kind of town where everybody knows everybody else, and there are no secrets. It's a town that exists only to serve the farms that surround it. It has no other industry. Don Starnes is not only the president of Farmers State Bank, He's also the mayor of Yuma. He knows he has to save the farms in order to save his bank and to save Yuma. And he knows that computer or no computer, it's not going to be easy. 15% of his farmers are on the edge of bankruptcy. As for the other 85%, there's a lot of them that's very close to being in trouble. Uh, if this continues this way for any length of time at all, uh, that percentage is going to increase very rapidly. It's a simple numbers game. 
In 1980, irrigated land around here was selling for $1,600 an acre. Now it's being offered at $800 with darn few takers. In 1980, corn and wheat were selling at $3 a bushel or more. Now wheat is around $2, and corn was quoted yesterday at $1.60. It costs $2.50 a bushel to grow corn and wheat. Do that arithmetic, and you have to wonder how any family farmer can stay in business, or why he'd want to. I have two young boys that's interested in farming yet, so we'd like to keep it, and it's a good life. You can see after you grow a crop what accomplishment you've got, what you've spent your lifetime or your last few years trying to do, but you've got the human elements and the, the economics that come along and destroy a lot of your dreams. You know farmers have given up? Yes. They're giving up about every day. They're forced to give up. Bud Meckelberg was forced to give up. His family has farmed in the Yuma area for generations, too, and he, too, has sons who want to be farmers. But he got too far into debt in the 70s. No computer could have saved him. Right over here, I have one farm for, that, I, that I wanted one son. And two miles south, I wanted, uh, we bought another farm for a son. And then uh, we have our oldest son about 15 miles north on that farm. And it looks like our goal is going to be that we're going to lose the whole show, with the exception of maybe the home place. Which is here. Which is right here. Now, the oldest son has still got a goal of staying on the farm. He might have to rent or whatever. But the rest of the family is gone. I mean, they're teaching school or they're going to college or whatever. One crucial question for agriculture is beyond the control of farmer's state or its computers or the farmers. Remember that pie chart the computer threw up to dramatize Harold Bach's income? Roughly a third is from the government. And if that goes, Bach goes. And the Reagan administration says it wants out of the farm subsidy business in five years. Don Starnes doesn't think that will happen. Farmers and the people who sell them things still vote. But how do rugged individualist farmers and staunch Republican bankers defend this dependence on federal checks? Very difficult to defend, let me tell you. I guess you take what you have to in order to survive reluctantly. You don't think the government can get out of the agriculture business? They can't. I don't think so. If it does, it's going to break the nation. If you had to make a forecast right now for the future of the family farm in the next 10 years, make it. I think that we have got at least five to 10 years before we see a major turnaround in agriculture. I think when agriculture does turn around, agriculture will again be healthy probably healthier than we've seen it for a long time uh, because everyone is going to have learned a lesson 